Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. I am super excited today because after tons of work I am finally ready to reveal the latest major double O gauge locomotive project. I've been working on this for quite a long time now, perhaps five or six weeks, and finally the development and the design stage, I think, you never know for sure, but I think is complete. Which means finally I'm able to reveal the design process for you. So, what is the new locomotive? Well, it's going to be the Furnace Railway number no. 3 locomotive, which is an 040 tender engine from 1846, and there is only one locomotive of this type still in preservation, and it is that one, number no. 3. It's currently housed at the National Railway Museum in York, and on a recent trip there, I saw the locomotive and was inspired by it. Now, at the time I saw this locomotive, I wasn't convinced that it would be possible to 3D print a working double O gauge model of it because, of course, it is a very, very small locomotive. But I really wanted to, so I photographed it. Now, it wasn't easy to photograph because there were a lot of people around and the loco, at the moment at least, is sandwiched between a couple of other locomotives. But I took some very strange photos. In fact, I bet I looked a real weirdo taking them. But I went up close, I took photos of the cylinders, I tried to look inside the cab. Photos that nobody normally in their right mind would take. And those photos are going to form the basis of the design. But because the loco was sandwiched between other locos and there was loads of people about, the photo I didn't get was a long shot of the entire locomotive and its tender. And of course, when you're trying to design a scale model, something like that is really handy. So, of course, what I really needed was a diagram. So, I looked on the internet and I managed to find a book. And this is the book. It is Furnace Railway Locomotives and Rolling Stock by R.W. Rush. And just like with my Gladstone project, the first diagram we get inside this book is, of course, the locomotive I want. There's all sorts of information to start with, but when the, when the, when the diagrams finally start, here it is. It's this one, class A2, number three. And unfortunately, this is a bad drawing. Or actually, I'd rather say, if you're looking to create a double O gauge or any gauge scale model of the Furness Railway number three, then this is a bad drawing because dimensionally it is completely different to the locomotive I photographed at the National Railway Museum. Everything from the length of the boiler to the depth of the firebox to the height of the dome to the positioning of the various parts seems to be considerably off. Now, I'm not necessarily going to blame RW Rush for this because perhaps this was drawn at a different period in the locomotive's lifetime. Perhaps it's been rebuilt and altered over the years. I'm not an expert on the thing in real life, so that's possible. And it's also possible that, yes, this is just a bad drawing. But it's also the only drawing of any quality that I was able to find of this. So some of the dimensions from my model are actually derived from this drawing. Now, in some cases where it obviously deviates from the locomotive I photographed, I've made changes and I've made it look more like it does in the photographs, but I do know that some dimensions are going to be a little bit off, which means my model isn't going to be 100% accurate, but I am hoping that it will at least be a decent likeness of the real locomotive, and that's really what I'm going for. So with a whole host of different photographs of the loco plus one diagram, which is not a great diagram, but better than nothing, it's finally time to crack on with the design. And as always, I like to start with the wheels. And the wheels that I'm going to be using are these. These are X8948 Hornby Coronation Class Tender Wheels, but they are the correct size or very, very close to the correct size. They also have two millimeter axles instead of three millimeter axles, which is usual for a locomotive. And I'm hoping this will be a bit easier to accommodate into the locomotive. And yes, I have been able to find some bearings for these smaller axles, no problem at all. 
So now we're in SketchUp and this is a very, very accurate model of the wheels that I'm going to use. Now obviously it's not accurate in the sense that it's got the spokes and all the crank pin holders and that in there, but it's dimensionally accurate. So the thickness of the wheels, the size of the flanges, the diameter, the gauge, all of that is accurate here to within one hundredth of a millimetre. And that is so that I can build the model up around these wheels and get all of the clearances correct. Very, very important. And once these wheels were in place and I'd used my diagram to get two sets of these wheels with the correct spacing, I was able to then build a very basic running plate around these axles. It became clear to me very early on that the running plate should be a part of the chassis. To have a separate chassis and a separate running plate and a separate upper body that all sort of fit together would just be too difficult due to the small size of this locomotive. So the next job is to incorporate the driving wheels actually into the running plate slash chassis so that the wheels actually mechanically fit into it. So to do this, I've produced an extra thick section of the chassis, which is going to house the axle and of course the proper bearings as well. Notice also the very large and convenient area behind the driving wheels produced by the lower firebox. I'm going to use this later and I'm sure you can guess what I'm planning to use it for. But before I can design the nuts and bolts, as it were, of the mechanism, I need to know the area into which I need to fit it. So the next job has to be to create the basic body. So that's what I'm starting here. It's just a very basic body. This is the outline of the boiler and the smoke box, which are designed based on the drawings. And this really is where things start to get tricky because this is a double O gauge model, not HO. So the wheels are gauged closer basically than they should be. Meaning that here you can see the wheels actually cut into part of the firebox. So I've actually had to cut a section of the firebox away in order to accommodate the wheels. This should later on be hidden by the rest of the detailing. So it's not too much of a compromise. Hopefully this won't completely ruin the model. The base, as you can see, of the smoke box now exists, and I've now been able to add a bit more running plate under here as well. And of course, the front buffer beam will eventually fit onto this piece as well. So here's the next revision. As you can see, I've now added a bit of the cab area. And you'll also notice that things are starting to get a little bit more detailed now because everything's falling into place and I'm getting more confident with the position of everything. So things are starting to become a little bit more finalized now. But as you can see, now the basic body exists. It's possible to actually now design a mechanism that fits neatly inside it. So reveal time, how do you power such a small locomotive? Well, I've decided to position a coreless motor vertically inside the firebox. This is the only place I could think of where I could do this and the mechanism would be almost completely out of sight. The firebox is absolutely perfect, incidentally, because it's in the, exactly the right position for interfacing with the rear driving wheels. And it's also the perfect height for the small coreless motor. I also created this gear, which is to be fitted to the rear driving wheels, and that creates a very, very simple gearbox. A large gear, though, has to be as big as I can in order to run the loco as slow as possible. And here it is with the mechanism that I had in mind realized. So the motor fits into a hole in the chassis and it's just gonna be held there by friction, but I guess you could glue it in if you want to. Then the worm drive pokes through the bottom where the gear can mesh. And the great part is from the outside, the mechanism is almost completely out of view. I've not had to compromise the boiler in any way, which means all of that area above the driving wheels can be filled with heavy weight, producing a, a decently heavy loco, hopefully. So now some serious development is underway. I've got some screw holes in the front and the back of the body, which go through the running plates, and that should marry those two parts together and also strengthen them. And I've also got a base keeper plate, which is later on going to have pickups built into it. I also keep adding to the bodywork as well. You can see the chimney here. That's a very important addition. Frankly, it was annoying me working on the model, not seeing a chimney on it. So once that was added, it just started to look a whole lot more real. One thing that was missing though was of course the splashes and these are a trademark part of the model. So as you can see, I've now put these in. 
These are to be separately fitted and they were, let me tell you, very, very difficult to design. And this is not the final version, they were revised a lot after this as well. But if you look at the real thing, these splashers sit very, very close to the wheel. And that's quite hard to do when your model is made up of 0.4 millimeter tubes of extruded plastic. So these have to be designed very, very precisely. They're also a little bit oversized, unfortunately, because on a model like this, things do move about quite a bit. And the flanges are oversized as well, so they've got to accommodate those. And of course, you can't have these splashes touching the wheels in any way because that will just create loads of friction. So they're a bit bigger than they should be, but that's just the kind of compromise you have to get used to with a model like this. I've also added a cavity in the smoke box, which should allow for 20 grams of weights to be added. And later on, I go ahead and change this design so that it works a little bit better. But I'm aiming for a loco weight of probably 60 to 70 grams. So not very heavy, but of course it should be very well balanced and all of that weight will go onto the drivers. And here we go, this is the next revision. You can see the cavity in the boiler is now vertical as this will just be easier to print and it should avoid having any really thin walls. I've also added some banding to the boiler and the idea for this is to give the lining that I'll be adding a bit of relief and it also shows you where to put the lining, which is really handy. But eventually I just decided, you know, this is gonna make the body too hard to finish. Uh, to sand it with these bands in place is just gonna be too difficult and the finish won't be right. So later on, you'll notice that these are removed and I'll just have to apply the lining onto a flat boiler. It won't look as good in terms of the relief, but the quality of the model will be much better as a result. So now the design is at a very, very crucial point. It's a point where it would be silly really to spend the next week or two designing and detailing the model if the basics of the design don't work. So I'm focusing now on finishing the mechanism so that I can actually print a prototype that I can test. So for this, I've designed some coupling rods, as you can see, again, based on the photographs. I've also got some wheels. I haven't really explained much about the wheels, but the Hornby Coronation tender wheels are going to have the centers cut out of them and replaced with these centers. And this was something new for me because I've got to incorporate crank pins, of course, into these wheels, which the Coronation wheels never had. Uh, so hopefully that will work properly. And in designing and testing these wheels, they've undergone several revisions. So these are far from the final design, uh, but you'll see those later on. I've also added these slots in the base keeper plate for pickups. This is another uh, sort of innovation that I'm quite pleased with. So basically you're gonna put brass wire into these slots and then with your soldering iron, you can just melt these slots and that sort of just melts around the brass wire and holds them perfectly in place. Quite a neat solution. Obviously the melted plastic bit isn't that neat, but it removes the need for glue and it removes the need for some sort of complex clipping system, which would be very bulky on a loco of this size. I also figured out that if I put some holes into the running plate here, I can route those brass wires from the pickups around the firebox area and up to the motor. And that will actually quite accurately recreate the pipe work that you can see here on the real thing. I've been extremely lucky with the whole firebox setup. It's almost like the real locomotive was designed with model making in mind. Absolutely amazing. So yes, definitely taking advantage of that. And with that, hopefully that is the mechanism ready. So with the basic locomotive and the mechanism completely designed, I was then able to produce the first prototype and I did. And here it is. So obviously, as I say, no detail on this yet. Uh, there's no handrails, none of the separately fitted parts, but it does demonstrate that the basic body design is printable. It actually works on a 3D printer and that the same is true for the chassis. You can also see that I've assembled the wheels and screwed on the coupling rods and whatnot. And if you look underneath, you can see that I have fitted a rudimentary set of pickups and also the motor and gears to this which means in theory, this should now be a running locomotive. Let's go and demonstrate that and hopefully that is true. All right then, the moment of truth. Now, to be clear, this is an early prototype. <laughs> uh, it hasn't been refined yet. And also because of the limitations relating to space, there isn't space for loads of gearing down on this. So I feel like it's gonna be quite a speedy girl. Not a lot I can do about that. Obviously, when you're 3D printing gears and such, there is a limit to how fine you can make the gears and that. So I'm just hoping for movement 
to be honest with you. <laughs> that's what I'm going for. So let's see if that's what I've got. Try reverse to start with. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh yeah, that'll be fine, won't it? That's actually not too bad. Now I've had some problems with getting the wheels um, fitted properly onto the axles. Um, it's very easy, it seems, to get them wobbly. But I've built a device that is going to help me do that. So on the next revision, the wheels should be perfectly straight, which should avoid all of the wobbling and such. Uh, but yeah, to say this is the smaller motor that I use, the one that's not that great, this is looking good. And notice how it's getting smoother already, actually, particularly in reverse. Why is it always these locos work better in reverse? I don't know. But yeah, the fact that you can't see the mechanism at all is just amazing. And it's running really reliably, even though it doesn't have a tender yet. And I'm, of course, I'm going to design tender pickups. So let's have a look and see if this thing can crawl. Obviously, it's not been run in or even fully designed yet, but... Let's see, I think it's gonna be better in reverse, to be honest with you, but let's find out. Ooh, slower. So if this was a review, I would say, eh, it's all right at the high speeds, but the crawl just isn't really there. So I'm gonna say that here, yeah, it's never gonna be an amazing crawler, although in reverse, that looked pretty good for a second. But yeah, it's cogging because it hasn't got a flywheel. No, a flywheel is pretty much out of the question with this. <laughs> but do you know what? If it's reliable, and if once I put some weights in the boiler, if it's a decent hauler, and there should be some torque there. Look, right, it does seem to be a, gripping the rails like nothing. Like, it's crazy. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> let's let it have a, a little explore on the layout then before I tear it to pieces. Here we go. So it looks like this should be capable of running at a relatively realistic speed. Uh, it's not going to be great at the low end, I don't think, although perhaps I'll be able to improve that. But it's, it looks as though it's going to be able to perform in at least a reasonable way. So halfway prototypical speeds, hopefully it'll be able to haul some coaches or some wagons, whatever you like. Given how basic the mechanism is, um, you know, it's, it's probably only a few steps up from the basic Hornby pocket rocket. I think I'm quite happy to just settle for that, to be honest. So there's not much to do really when it comes to mechanism. Uh, maybe I could tweak a few of the fits and such, but it seems to be working just fine, which is awesome. And of course, this means I can move on. So moving back to the design, now that I know the loco works okay, I can start with the detailing. So, so the first thing to show are these number plates. These are to be separately fitted, which should allow them to be decorated separately, and it will also allow the boiler to be lined and such without these annoying name, number plates sorry, in place. There's also a realistic buffer beam that's going to have separately fitted buffers and also a coupling hook for the first time. Uh, this will all be fitted separately to the chassis section, of course. We've got a single piece smoke box door, which is going to fit onto the end of the weight cavity in the boiler, or smoke box, I guess. This will be printed with supports, which removes the need to have an adapter on the back of it, so that's very good. And also it's going to have a separately fitted smoke box dart, as you'd probably expect. I've got 3D printed handrails and the relevant pipe work over on this side as well. And all of this will be 3D printed, like I say, separately painted and then fitted into holes printed into the boiler, which is good. And then we've got this reverser rod, which extends the length of the body from the cab, but also due to the discrepancy in the gauge as a result of this being double O, there's no space for the reverser to go down behind the front driving wheels. So I've just got it subtly poking into the side of the boiler again for support. Not very realistic, but again, it's a compromise. Nothing much I can really do about that, and it shouldn't matter. I don't think you'll be able to notice it. Next, I've added a bit more detail. You can see we've got some cylinders under the smoke box. These are very noticeable, and at least I'm no longer a weirdo for taking this frankly bizarre photo of the real thing. And these are quite interesting because they're split between the body of the loco and the chassis of the loco. But when put together, they should match up perfectly. Fingers crossed that's the case. I've also got some of these valves that go behind the number plates. 
and these are going to have real copper wire melted into them which is going to terminate in these holes in the chassis so we've got some real metal work on this loco for the first time. I've also got this safety valve assembly on top of the copper dome. The dome itself is going to be part of the main body, but then this upper section is going to be separately fitted and of course separately painted. And that too is going to fit into holes cut into the body. Finally, for the loco at least, I've added some detail to the cab, and this includes a nice firebox door based on the photos. I've got the regulator rod right here, a couple of gauges, and these two are going to have copper pipework fitted to them, and incidentally that's what this other hole is for as well, real pipework on those. And I've also started working on the tender. For this, I'm just using some basic wagon wheels, which have proved to be roughly the right size. And then I've used some photos that I took, really, and a few other photos that I found online, just to get the spacing of these wheels correct, so that I can then build a tender around them. And sure enough, around these wheels, I've built a very basic tender chassis. The axle boxes here stick out a little bit too much. Uh, that's to accommodate the axles, but this, of course, will be amended a bit later on to look a bit finer. And then next, I've added a very basic body on top of that tender chassis. Now, I don't have a proper drawing of the tender whatsoever, so I've literally had to piece it together from my own photos and images that I found online. So given the nature of the way I've designed this, the proportions of this body will change, you'll notice, over the next few revisions. So the signature element of this tender is its sloping top, and it was quite tricky to figure out how to do this in SketchUp. So this was my first attempt, but it looks quite chunky, obviously, so not keen on that. So next up, this is the same thing, but I've now done it a different way, and I think this looks much, much better. Uh, it's much finer, and it sort of tapers on the inside as well as on the outside. So I'm happy with that, I can move on. And now you can see a massive jump in the level of detail. I've now planned out the interior. I've got a space for some coal to go into. I've got the water filler cap and also a wheel, which is going to be fitted by another bit of copper wire. I've got some handrails on the front end, which has been reshaped very slightly to make it a bit more realistic and to scale. I've also got a separately fitted buffer beam, which is going on the back. This is based on the front buffer beam, but it is slightly different as per the prototype. And then I've got the NEM pocket subtly placed below the buffer beam with a hidden screw for the back of the body a little bit further behind as well. And then on the front, I've got a slightly improved coupling setup than the one you saw on my Gladstone. So the drawbar screws to the tender as before, but it actually clips to the loco. So it's much slimmer on the loco end and it should be a bit easier to connect and disconnect them. And there's also a couple of screw holes either side of the tender for the body to fit onto. And these are separate from the screw that holds the drawbar. With Gladstone, I tried to economize and make that one screw for the drawbar hold the body as well but that just made things a bit too complicated. So we've got more distinct screws for different purposes here, which is better, I think. And then the base of the chassis now has a hole in the center for the pickup wires to pass through, as well as some more solderable pickup holders, which I just love using. They're so much better than trying to faff around with resins and trying to stick pickups on. Yeah, this is the way to do it. So with that, this brings us to the very final revision of my design. There are a few changes, uh, let me just walk you through those. So we've got a coal load now, yeah, I've popped that inside the coal tender, and that was designed from scratch using the sandbox mode in SketchUp, so you can do that, that's an option. And the Loco has had one or two additions and minor tweaks. Uh, I've now got some rear steps, which look much better, I think. It's got a reverser handle inside the cab, uh, which is to be another separately fitted part. But this is it, this is the design. We know it works. I don't yet know whether all of the details fit, but there's nothing too complex going on with the detailing. So with a little bit of luck and perhaps a little bit of tweaking, I'm hoping this should all work. I am so, so happy with this design. I think this has to be my favorite design project so far. I think it's easily the most complex I've ever attempted, and it's definitely been the most fun to work on. So what is next? This is the end of the video for now. But next, I'm going to be printing off all of these parts. I'm going to be printing off an updated version of the body, the chassis, and for the first time, the tender. And then on the next video, I'm going to attempt to build all of this for the first time without any paint or anything like that. I'm just going to build all of the parts together to see how it fits, see how easy it is, see if there's anything that needs to be changed. 
Then, once all of that is over, just like I did with Gladstone, I'm going to build a proper version with all of the paintwork on it and such. And then, once everything works, I will be making the designs available to you. Um, they're probably going to be free again. Yeah, I'm not probably going to charge you for this, but in the future, I might start charging for designs. But yeah, I think this one will be free yet again. So, to be continued, I'll see you very soon. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this design. Do you like it? Does it look right to you? Uh, do you think I've managed to get the compromise right between real life and in model form? I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.